Hello and welcome back to Park Fermi Parley with Kieran Downey. Emergency edition. That's right, we have some breaking news on our hands. We finally know where Carlos Sainz is going to be driving in 2025. As everyone expected, he's going to Williams. Before we get into this, I must say that the timing of the news is a wild one. I did not think we would get it on the first day of summer break. I'll say that much. But every time there is big news coming out of Formula One in terms of driver contracts, it's always when I'm at goddamn work. Every single time, Esteban Ocon, Nico Hulkenberg, Fernando Alonso, always when I'm at work. And it stresses me out because all I want to do is get home and get talking about it, but I can't because I'm stuck at my desk. I have to sit and I have to wait and it kills me every time but I'm finally home we're here let's break it down first of all big up James Vowles for convincing Carlos Sainz to sign with Williams they probably have the best driver pairing for one of the worst performing teams like if you think about it in 2023 they finished seventh in the constructor standings with 28 points I think it was we are more than halfway through the 2024 season and they are ninth in the constructor standings and have four points to be going into 2025 as a constructor that probably won't climb any higher within those standings. I can't see them finishing, I can't see them finishing seventh. I'll put it that way. To see them going into 2025 with Alex Albon and Carlos Sainz as their driver pairing, that is, it's wild. I am glad that they finally have a good pairing. I don't know what James Viles has said to Carlos Sainz, but it is clear that that man can convince anyone to do anything because the sweet talking he has obviously given Carlos Sainz, I don't know what he's promised him, money's not really an object for Williams anymore, really. So I imagine he's getting a pretty decent paycheck. But to go from a team where finishing fifth and sixth is like a bad day for Ferrari to going to Williams where a ninth or tenth place finish is like winning the race for them. Do you know what I mean? It's such the jump between the two. Obviously Carlos wouldn't have wanted to make that jump but whatever James Viles has said to him has obviously sealed the deal. I knew that was where he was going but I am just a little bit shocked by it. I will say that I am actually a little bit sad that Carlos is going to Williams. It's great news for Williams, it's great that Carlos has a seat for next year but Carlos is way more talented than driving for Williams in its current form. He should be in one of the front running teams and unfortunately the timing it's just not worked out for him and I feel bad for him because it it is just it's just timing that he was in the seat that Lewis Hamilton wanted. Lewis Hamilton decided he wanted to go to the prancing horse, wear the red overalls, drive for the Italian team, drive for Ferrari and that meant that it was see you later Carlos and He's unfortunately been put in a position where there wasn't really any other place for him to go. And we'll break down the other teams that he could have gone to in a second, but there was no other option for it. As I said, it is probably the best pairing for one of the worst performing teams I think I've ever seen. And I'm very interested going into 2025 now to see how they stack up against each other. More importantly, how does Alex Albon stack up against Carlos Sainz because when Alex went to Williams he had a teammate in Latifi that wasn't performing great at all. He's then had Logan Sargent for two years that also hasn't performed great so it'll be interesting to see whether the Williams is actually an all right car and the drivers that Alex has been paired with are just not great or whether or whether the car is the issue and Alex is just driving the life out of it. We're going to have a very interesting benchmark in Carlos Sainz to weigh Alex Albon up against and as I said it'll just be very interesting to see wh what Alex's performance is like. Just get a good idea and a good gauge of Alex's performance when, the, when they're in the same machinery. He's now going to have a teammate that has been at the front that is a race winner, a Grand Prix winner he hasn't had that. It's just a very interesting dynamic and I'm quite looking forward to see how that plays out. It's important to note that Carlos's contract states that it is for the 2025 season, the 2026 season and beyond. So we don't know how long the contract is actually for 
I wonder if there's any kind of performance clauses. If a seat becomes available basically at one of the top teams, can Carlos get out of his contract to, to take a seat at a, at a better performing team? We've got a good two years to see what happens with Carlos at Williams. We obviously, I'm not expecting mad things next year. Now, obviously, a topic of conversation that everyone has been talking about, commenting on, is just how long it has taken Carlos to announce where he's going to go. And I purely think that is down to that man was holding out. He was waiting to see if there was going to be anything at one of the front teams. As I said, it was obviously a shame that it was his seat that Lewis Hamilton wanted. It's just it's just the timing and the way things work out. That's Formula One. And I genuinely think that he was waiting for maybe a Red Bull or a Mercedes just to... He was. I think he was clinging on to that. There was obviously no seat at McLaren for him. There wasn't any Aston Martin seat for him. It was, I think, for front runners, it was always a Red Bull or Mercedes. To see. He's holding out for that. Now, in terms of the other options that Carlos had, he obviously, at the front, he had Red Bull and Mercedes. Now, that Red Bull seat was obviously going to Sergio Perez. We all kind of expected that. Sergio's poor performance in the conversation of, will Sergio get bumped? Will he get fired? Is he going to V-Carb? Are we swapping him out? The signs was never going to go to Red Bull. They were never going to offer signs that seat. But it does seem to be clear that should Perez get bumped, that seat is most likely going to be Daniel Ricciardo's. Unless this rumoured shootout between Liam Lawson and Daniel Ricciardo swings in the other way and Liam Lawson ends up at Red Bull. But there was never actually a place for signs at Red Bull. Scratch that one off the list. Mercedes, pretty much immediately after Lewis Hamilton announced his departure from Mercedes, Toto Wolff was all over Kimi Antonelli. It was absolutely everywhere that Kimi Antonelli was going to be going straight into that Formula One seat. And there's a lot of talk about Kimi Antonelli still. Is he ready? Is he not? He's not having the best F2 season. He's skipped F3. Is he ready actually to to go into F1. He's only, what, 17, I think? And as much as the talk was, it doesn't seem like Antonelli's ready, Toto Wolff has been fairly steadfast in saying that Antonelli is the future of the Mercedes team. When I did my driver predictions for 2025 a few months ago, I had said that I thought Carlos Sainz would actually go to Mercedes for one year. I generally believed it that if Antonelli was actually going into F1, it would be more likely that he would go to Williams for a year to bed himself in, get himself used to driving an F1 car competitively before jumping his way all the way up to the top of the grid to be in Mercedes. And I figured that if that was going to be the case, then the perfect person to go into Mercedes for one year would be Carlos Sainz. And I imagine Carlos also felt the same. Then rather go and hang about at the back of the grid in a Alpine, a Williams, a Audi, Sauber. He would rather fight for podiums and wins at the front of the pack in a Mercedes for one year and then can reevaluate again going into 2026. That's what I generally thought would happen. But as time went on, it does seem like we could just be getting Antonelli straight into that Mercedes seat. In terms of Alpine, I think could have been a contender as they were beginning to get a little bit better but they're now just falling apart at the seams. That team is a complete and utter mess at the moment. And I think that it's basically just like a, you know, like a beware around Alpine at the moment, because there's obviously the announcement that Famine's leaving his role as team principal. There's all the rumors that they could be ditching the Renault engine program, that Renault could be shutting down that program and that they could be going for a Mercedes engine for as soon as next year, to be honest with you. It was rumored to be 2026. It now could be 2025. And I just think that that team is too messy and, and as I said, just falling apart that I think Sainz just would want nothing to do with it. And I'm so glad he's not going to Alpine. I'll be completely honest with you. And then we have Audi, who coming into this year, it seemed like Audi was going to be the front runner, that Audi was going to be the team that Sainz would go to. And I think that there's now a worry of what Audi will be like when they fully take over. And I say that because one, Cyber's performance is probably the worst I've seen in a long time. That team is terrible. We are 14 races into the year. They are the last constructor. They are the only constructor behind Williams. They have zero points. They, the majority of the time they get about four laps into a race, they break down and have to retire one of the cars. And I just don't feel like the promise of Audi coming this big engine manufacturer coming into the sport and taking over the team in 2026 
is enough to convince Sainz to go and chill P19, P20 for an entire year. It would be a complete embarrassment. And then I'm beginning to kind of worry about Audi coming in in 2026 and what their performance will actually be like. Because if it was confirmed that Audi were going to be amazing in 2026, and we kind of knew that, would the risk of being P20, 1920 19, for a year be worth then being in a really competitive car for the new regulations. Maybe, but it doesn't seem to be going that way. And the more and more I think about it, and the more as time goes on, I don't think Audi are going to be competitive or a decent team in 2026. They've obviously signed Hulkenberg. Maybe, I mean, we'll only know, time will only tell, but could Hulkenberg end up regretting going to Audi? It is quite wild that Sainz's dad obviously has a huge connection with Audi. He does a lot of work with Audi. And whatever that team have shown Carlos and spoke to Carlos about, it's obviously not enough to convince him to go and sign for that team. And it just kind of seems, does anybody really want to join Audi? Apart from Hulkenberg? Hulkenberg's statement obviously said that he was very excited as a German driver to be joining a team that was going to be a German manufacturer. That's a lovely story, but nobody else seems to want to touch Audi with a barge pole. And I am a little bit worried that coming into 2026, these new regulations at Audi again are going to be nowhere. And then that left us with Williams, which, as I've said, was his best option. It was his only option. So instead of fighting for P19, P20, he's probably fighting for... P14, P15, maybe the odd P9. Listen, we all love Williams. They are the underdog. Everybody loves the underdog. I think everybody, regardless of who you support, who you're a fan of, everyone has a soft spot for Williams. They are, they've got such an incredible history and heritage within Formula One. They are, I don't know what has happened, obviously, in recent years. They fell off a cliff and Vowles has gone in and practically ripped the whole thing apart and is building it from scratch. And he said it's a long game. It's a it's a five year, five plus year plan he's got for this team. And Carlos is obviously going to be a huge part of that. He's been in the front running teams. He can the knowledge that he has. He's got a great strategic mind. He's obviously worked with Ferrari now for a good few years. He can bring a lot to that team. I mean, Vowell's signing Carlos signs on is a huge confidence boost in Williams and their program and what they're doing, and in James Vowles. And obviously, Carlos's mindset is going to have to change completely from being in a team that is fighting for podiums and race wins. He's going to have to completely change his mindset that that's not going to be achievable, and what we are going to be fighting for is most likely a P9 and P10. He is going to have to change his mindset from being a front runner to fighting for scraps of points. How can he help push this team further up the grid and it'll be a complete culture shock for him and I don't doubt that he's not ready for the job he would never have accepted and gone to Williams if he wasn't ready for that task and it's a monumental job he's got ahead of him it's a brilliant story for Carlos to be fair to go to a struggling team and be part of building them back up. And that is everything from an emergency breaking news podcast. Carlos signs going to Williams. As I said, I'm very excited to see this pairing. Very excited to see an Alex Albon and Carlos signs pairing. And in 2025, we're going to have a very good idea of how Williams is performing as a team and how they're getting better, if they're getting better. We've got two very competent drivers. We're going to have a very good benchmark with Carlos Sainz to weigh Alex Albon up against in his performance. As I said, that is a stacked driver lineup for a ninth place constructor. But that is everything from us. If you haven't already, please click the link in the description box below to fill out our mid-season driver ratings, and I will be back with them very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Love you. Bye.